Hello, my name is Heike Lindagangas. I'm a co-founder at Neon. Uh, I've been a Postgres hacker for a long time, uh, but now, now I'm working for Neon on mostly on the storage engine uh, and everything related to Postgres. Today, I'm going to talk about the storage engine in Neon. Um, in a nutshell, uh, what we've done is that we've separated the compute and storage. Uh, there are there's a single writer node like in Postgres. We have it's not a uh, it's not a multi master system. It's a single writer, multiple readers, and uh, it's multi tenant. Uh, the storage is multi tenant, but the computes are single uh, single tenant, and they run in Kubernetes containers. Um, so so the kind of the core of this, I'm going to talk about two parts. The first of all is the separation of compute and storage, and uh, so why do we do separation of compute and storage? So let's let's start with the with the traditional Postgres installation. Uh, traditionally, in Postgres and other databases, you have a single instance, and uh, that single instance controls the storage of that node. Uh, so it can be local SSD, or it can be uh, EBS volume on on cloud, or it can be something else. But it, but the idea is that that single uh, node of database node controls that storage. Uh, once you have that set up, you'll probably realize pretty quickly that you actually also want to have backups of your database. So you typically set up a cron job or something that takes a backup of your database every night or every week or something and uploads it to cloud storage typically these days. Uh, so you set that up, that cron job up, and, and now you have backups. Maybe it's incremental backups, uh, but, you, but you have that. So now you have two copies of your data. You have the the main database running running on the node, and then you have some like a copy of that in, in your backup storage. Uh, next thing you realize is that it's not good enough to have a backup every night. So you set up uh, log streaming while shipping in Postgres, which means that every time a transaction log segment gets filled up, it gets uploaded to the cloud storage. And, and with that, you can restore to any point in time. So you can take the last backup and you can recover by replaying the logs. Uh, and you can restore you can restore your database from that backup. Uh, of course, that takes a while. Like restoring from backup is not a cheap operation. You don't want to do that unnecessarily, especially if you have a large database. But it's it's possible you have that. Um, next thing you realize is that it's not actually good enough to have just one node running. You you probably also want to have a replica of your database because it takes a while to restore from the, from that backup, even if you don't need super high availability. You, you're probably still not happy to, like if you have a large database, you're not happy to wait an hour for, for your backup and to restore. So you want to set up a replica of your database. Um, so now you have two copies of your database. You have the primary and you have the replica and you have actually a third copy in your backup storage uh, with the log shipping. The starts to get a little bit complicated to set up. So you probably use something like Patroni or something, those tools to, to deal with this complexity, but it, it is, Nevertheless, a bit pretty complex. And if something goes wrong, you have to figure out what is the latest version of your data and what do you need to restore and, and where. And maybe you need to set up more, more instances to, to restore. So if you look at this picture, there's multiple storage components here. And each node, primary, replica, and so forth, they control part of the storage. Or they like have their own copy of the storage. So the idea with Neon is to split that up. Uh, across the storage layer so that there is only one copy of your database and it lives in the Neon storage engine. Uh, so that single storage system uh, can deal with the primary, any read-only nodes you want to have, and it also deals with backups. And this simplifies the setup quite a lot because now you only have one storage system that you need to worry about. And you can connect your primary to it or you can connect your read-only replicas to it if you want to do that. Uh, if one of the Postgres instances die, uh, you can very quickly spin up a new one because there is no storage, there is no restoration needed. Uh, you just connect it to the storage system that's that's there and up and running. Um, so this is what allows the storage system is what allows Neon to be serverless. So whenever your database is inactive for more than five minutes, uh, we shut it down and, and we completely remove the compute node. And then when you connect to it again, we just spin it up again in a Kubernetes container. And that's pretty quick because uh, it, it doesn't need to restore your database. It only needs to connect to the existing storage system. So as, and as I said, you can share the same storage with multiple read-only nodes. So if you have a primary one or two replicas, they can all connect to the same storage. You don't need to duplicate the data. 
Another benefit is that you can scale the compute and the storage independently. So you can keep adding these read-only nodes uh, as many as you want, uh, as long as you, you know, up to some reasonable limit. Uh, but you can keep adding these compute nodes, and you can also scale out the storage system independently of the compute nodes. So if you need more storage, uh, the Neon storage will work with cloud storage, so it will upload stuff to uh, Amazon S3 or, or Google Cloud Storage or something compatible. And on demand, when you need it, it, get, it uploads and downloads the files back and forth cloud storage. So it's, kind of, it's basically bottomless storage. It, you never run out of disk space there. Uh, it's only a matter of how much do you want to keep cached in the storage layer. So that's kind of the motivation for why, why, why do we separate the compute and storage? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what happens under the hood. So within the storage engine, how does it work? Uh, firstly, there is the write path. So whenever Postgres makes a modification to a page, whenever you modify something, insert, update, delete, um, it writes a record to the transaction log, the write ahead log uh, in Postgres. Uh, normally, that, that would get shipped or streamed to a replica, uh, but in Neon, it gets streamed to what we call the safekeeper nodes. And we have three safekeeper nodes running at all times for, for each database. And uh, the point is that there's always three running, so you have a quorum of, of those nodes. So there's a quorum, a consensus algorithm, and you need to reach a quorum to figure out when is the commit actually do, uh, doable. So when you commit a transaction, it gets sent to all three safekeeper nodes, uh, and we acknowledge the commit to the client uh, when it's safely, durably stored on at least two of those safekeeper nodes. So this kind of removes, uh, you kind of get synchronous replication uh, out of the box here. Normally with, with Postgres, you would need to have, so it's called at least the same kind of uh, durability. You would need to set up one primary and at least two uh, more standby nodes. And, and set up synchronous replication between them. And it, it, it can be a bit tricky to set up and manage. With Neon, you get that out of the box. So there's these, always these safekeeper nodes running, and uh, you never lose a recent transaction thanks to that. And it's always clear like what is the head of the database, where, how far is it? You don't need to uh, kind of guess in a disaster scenario like what was the most recent copy of the data. So, from the safekeepers, once you make the transaction durable, uh, it gets the right that look gets streamed to the paid servers. And most of the code we have in the storage engine is in the paid servers. So the paid server digests or processes the incoming logs and it reorganizes and builds a little index on it uh, to make it available for reads. So normally your transaction log is, is append only, you just add to the end of that end of the log and uh, and if you need to restore, uh, in a normal system, you need to restore a database, you have to start from a full backup and re uh, replay all of the logs. But Neon keeps reorganizing the log, so you don't need to do that. But it, it can actually do random access into the log and find the log records for a particular page without having to restore the whole database. So the page server does that. And finally, it writes these processed logs uh, to immutable files. Uh, there's a file format we have for, for these files uh, to keep the logs accessible. Like you can randomly access them, um, but, but they're also written for files on disk. And it's basically the same log format as in Postgres, just reorganized. Finally, it gets uploaded to the cloud storage. So the paid servers, after that point, one, once it's written to cloud storage, we rely on the cloud storage for durability. Um, so after that point, it's okay if we lose the page server, we can just re-download the stuff from, from cloud storage if needed. So that's the write path. Now, on the read path, it gets interesting. Um, I mentioned that the Neon storage replaces your backups too, but it handles all of the storage. So whenever the compute node, or Postgres in this case, needs to read a page, uh, it works with a, like a request response system. So it sends a request to the page server, uh, and the function is called or uh, function is called uh, get page at LSM. So it requests a particular page at a particular point in time. Uh, so that's that's what the request basically looks like. And uh, there are three options. Like in your primary node, you would always 
the, the primary node always requests the latest version of each page. So if you modified it, it, you want to see those changes. But it gets more interesting with the read-only nodes. So you can spin up a new read-only node at an older point in time. And that allows you to do kind of time travel query. And that's why it is also, uh, that's why you don't need traditional backups anymore, because this handles, handles that backup case as well. You can just launch a new read-only node, and it can request to see the data as it was at an older point in time. So if you accidentally drop a table, you can just launch a new node, and you can see the data as it was before that accident happened. Or you can set up a read-only node that follows the primary, and but kind of lags behind a little bit if you, if you want that. So from a scalability point of view, the cloud storage gives you the bottomless storage. You never run, run out of disk space there. And uh, then the read IO and caching can be scaled by scaling out the paid servers. And uh, I think the second part of the presentation is this non-overwriting storage. So that's how that's the key innovation of how we can uh, replace the traditional backups and how we can make this work seamlessly with the old versions. So again, if you look at the no, like a single node Postgres system or a single node other databases, most databases look the same way. Uh, you would have a local disk or network volume for the database itself, and then you would take backups uh, and upload them to cloud storage or maybe take them somewhere else. You could do incremental backups, and then you would also do while shipping, as I mentioned. And, and you would also need to rely on a standby for the recent transactions. So you would have this separation between the active data, which lives on the database node itself, and the backups. Neon gets rid of that distinction between the active data and backups and wall archives. So it's all just data uh, for the storage system. Uh, and because it's non-overriding, whenever new data is digested into the system, uh, we remember it all. Like we keep all the history up to some you know, configurable uh, limit, but we keep all of the history. So we never overwrite the old data. We, we, we keep it all accessible. Um, so in a way, Neon Storage is like having your backups and your wall archive, but we make it immediately accessible. So you don't need to restore the backup and replay all of the logs. It's just always, always immediately accessible and randomly accessible. Uh, that's one way to think about the Neon Storage. But it's fast enough that you can actually point your primary to it as well, and it, it works fast enough for that. Uh, so in a nutshell, the, the way the non-overriding storage works is that the incoming log is processed and it's reorganized uh, into what we call these layer files. And this was inspired by uh, log-structured merge trees, uh, LSM trees, which are very commonly used in key value stores. There's RocksDB and many others that, that have that, uh, that design. No overriding storage is the key to all of this. So, so whenever uh, Neon processes a piece of log, like incoming data, uh, it's uh, organized in memory first, and then it's flushed out to a file, a new file. Uh, and we always just create new files as data comes in. And we create new files as part of uh, background operations to reorganize the data for faster access. And we have a, uh, another background job to garbage collect old files that are not needed anymore. But we never modify a file in place. And that's what makes it easy to work with the cloud storage, because cloud storage also doesn't allow you to randomly access or um, update pieces of a file. It's always like you have to upload a full object, and you can download a full object back. But it's, it's not easy or it's not feasible to do random updates. So this non overriding storage is a, is a good fit for uh, for cloud storage. Uh, I have a little demo uh, for how this works um, here. So I ran, I ran this little tool that we use internally for, uh, uh, for uh, testing. So, so in this workload, I ran pgbench, which is a benchmarking tool that comes with Postgres. Uh, it's a very simple workload, like random, mostly random updates across a, a simple OLTP database. Uh, but there's also uh, there's also one table that's append only. So you can see, as I ran this benchmark, I collected the trace of these layer files as they're created. 
So in the bottom, you can see that new files are being created around here. Every time a batch of updates happen in the benchmark, uh, it gets written off to a new file. Uh, so you keep adding these files at the top. Then every now and then we run this compaction operation, which uh, reorganizes the data to make it more faster to access and also to allow garbage collection. Then every now and then you can see the garbage collection actually happening here in the bottom. So you can see these files being deleted uh, right here. Uh, as, as the system uh, sees that they're no longer needed because they, they, they become old enough. And, and you can kind of see this, this workload going through the same process. New files get added to the, air, at, to the top, uh, containing the new data, new updates, and it gets resuffled after a while, and, and finally it gets garbage collected and becomes old enough. And if you scroll off to the top, like as, as the benchmark runs for a while, you can see an interesting pattern here. So there's kind of a gap here. And that gap represents the append-only table. So we never, we, if you have a portion of your database that you don't update, like, like in case of an append-only table, uh, you just add to the end, but you don't go and modify the table, table or all the parts of the table anymore. Uh, you can see that we, we keep, we don't overwrite the data anymore, but we just keep the old data because it's unmodified. So we don't need to rewrite it over and over again. So that's, in a sense, that's like an incremental backup of the whole whole database, but it's it's immediately accessible and used by, by the primary as well. Um, so this is a little demo to show, show how we think about the storage. So there is no distinction between the the new and the old data, it's all just storage. And uh, it's up to the compute node to request. Uh, if it's a primary node, it asks for the pages, the most recent versions of the pages. If it's a backup uh, operation or restore operation, you just request the older versions of the page. So this kind of changes the way you think about the storage. Uh, you know, Previously, with traditional installations, you have to think about how often do you want to take a backup? And that's affected by how long are you willing to wait if you need to restore? Like, how long does it take to restore your backup? And you need to worry about while archiving, so you can do the point in time recovery. Um, most people want that. And you need to think about like what is your disk size of the, for the primary, and you need to think about how much disk do you need for the replicas? How many replicas do you need? How long does it take to build those replicas, and so forth? But Neon kind of changes that way of thinking. So you, you don't need to think about those things anymore. Um, instead, what do you think about? You think in terms of retention period. So how long do you need to keep your data? Do you want to keep, keep your data for one week? So if you need to see what the data looked like one week ago, uh, you, you configure that. Or if you want to say, keep it for a month or a year, that's up to you. It takes up some storage, but cloud storage is cheap. Uh, but but it's all it's 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 a con user configurable setting. How long do you want to keep that? Uh, and you also can do branches with this. So what I didn't mention previously is that the unknown overriding storage is also important for our branching feature of the future. Uh, because we don't modify the files, it's very easy to do copy and write uh, with the storage system. When you create a branch, we just remember that there is a point in the history uh, that we need to keep for the branch, and then we start collecting the new data for the new branch from that point on. Uh, but again, the user doesn't need to think about in terms of copies of data or time to restore or, or backups. Uh, you think in terms of retention period, how long do you want to keep your data? And if you need to go back and modify or look at the old data, you create a branch. Uh, that's, that's, that's how the new storage works in a nutshell. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have exciting more uh, content for the developer days, so keep tuned. Bye.